I've actually made it. After a gruelling 30-hour flight from England, I'm actually here in Fiji. My first stop is a small island called Kandavu, and I've bought a gift for the chief there. It's a carver route, ain't got a clue what he's going to do with it, but apparently it's a tradition. The Pacific Ocean takes up more room on this planet than all the dry land put together. The islands of the Pacific were once famed for headhunting and cannibalism. Shark worship and sorcery still survive. There are over 30,000 islands here, but I'm visiting just a handful. I start my journey in Fiji, then I head west to Vanuatu and finish my trip in the Solomon Islands. going to be presented by somebody else on my behalf to the chief. So it looks like it's carver time. Carver is made by grinding the root of a pepper plant, then mixing it with water and straining it through hibiscus fibres. The ceremony is an important part of the culture of the South Pacific. It is used in welcoming guests, discussing business, or just passing the time of day. The ceremony takes place in the official carver hut. The drink is offered round to people in order of importance, starting with the chief of the village. Some people say that Fijians have kava rather than blood in their veins. Gives her mouth a nice little tingle there. <laughs> Fiji has a reputation for expensive touristy hotels, but nothing can be further from the truth especially if you head out for the smaller islands, such as Kandavu. Here it costs just $15 a night, including meals for a hut known as a bure on the beach. This is Albert's place. There are flights to Kandavu from Nandi and Suva, the two main towns on Viti Levu. If you let Albert know you're coming, 
He'll pick you up from the airport in his boat. I've been told that there's a brilliant reef out there, so I've chosen it as my first dive. Morning. Morning, Ian. How you doing? Not too bad. Good. Got you all set up with your tanks, your VCD, and your regulators. Okay. So all right. we need to do is set you up with fins, mask, and a wetsuit. All right. This is the Astralaba Reef. The clear water of the South Pacific makes it one of the best diving locations in the world. And what makes the Astralaba special is that it stretches unbroken for 20 miles along the east side of Kandavul. It has a drop of 600 feet on the outside and visibility can be up to 300 feet on a good day. It's barely been touched by humans. In fact, they're so strict about preserving the reef that boats aren't allowed to drop anchor in case they break the coral. Albert's place is famous among travellers as one of the best cheap places to eat. It's also a good place to pick up hints about the country. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Fijians are just yeah. curious. Yeah. And they're interested to know why you're travelling on your own and why you're not with a boyfriend or a husband or yeah. whatever. Okay. This is such a family oriented yeah. society here. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Has the travel been okay? Yeah. Got around yeah. easy enough? There's plenty of options, but uh, it seems that they seem to work on PG time, which you get used to pretty quickly, like uh, 6 o'clock means maybe 6 o'clock or maybe 6.30, uh, maybe 7, we'll see how we go. Uh, Throw your watch away and switch on the PG time. PG time. If I'm travelling to a hot country, I try and take as little as possible. Just the clothes I'm in, two changes of clothes, toiletries, and that's it because I hate big rucksacks and carting them around. Even this one can get a bit hot after a couple of weeks. So it helps if you just take about four paces back, take a run up and just give it a nice kick on the side. It doesn't lighten the load, but you just feel a bit better. Viti Levu is the largest Fijian island. Nearly half the population here is from India. And although the country is now peaceful, there was a military coup in 1987 when Fijians ransacked Indian shops to protest at their wealth. The land here is mostly owned by native Fijians who lease it to small independent Indian farmers to grow sugarcane. Good, mm. not wet. God, get the caught in your teeth for it. Yes. Yeah. Mmm, that is the top. Did you spit these bits out? Sugar cane burning is a common sight in the evening. Sugar is the second largest industry in Fiji after tourism. But falling well prices mean that it could soon be a thing of the past. Apparently, these leaves are a natural antiseptic. You roll them up in a ball like that. And get that mixture there. And see that cut there? Squeeze them on. This leaves called mile a minute. That's it. 
Hitchhiking is a good way to travel around VT level, but always give the driver some money at the end of the journey to help pay for petrol. The Nalsori Highlands are one of Fiji's best kept secrets. If you take the road southwest to the coast, you end up at one of the most beautiful beaches on the island, Natandola. You hold this, yep. and oh. you go yourself. Ready to roll? <laughs> Up to you. Go. <laughs> he's, he's got out of control. Don't get involved in the horses. Come on. Woo! Down there. I'm sure that nobody realised that this was my first time on a horse. Manor Island is part of a group of islands called the Mamanukas. Although Manor is famous for its beaches, I didn't have much time to hang around. I was on my way to meet Appy, who was going to teach me to feed fish. It sounded easy, I thought. Morning, Appy. Bula, bula. Welcome to Manor. Okay. Right. We're going yes. um, feeding fish today, are All we? All right. OK. Right. I'm there. I'm there. Woo! All right. Let's go. Let's go down and have a look. takes tourists to see the sharks once a week. He believes that he'll never get attacked because we're all God's creatures. But I reckon when you're happy size, nothing's gonna mess with you anyway. Read that nice reading at night there before you go for your next dive. Yeah, it's good, good book. That this not a real one, that's what? the real one here. That's the real one. Yeah, yeah. have to say Bola when you yeah. meet him. <laughs> 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 Morning. In fact, it's six in the morning, and I'm flying to Vanuatu. I'm using this Air Pacific flight, which gives me three flights for six hundred dollars. So I'm going from here, Fiji, to Vanuatu, and then to Solomon Islands. Until 1980, Vanuatu was ruled by an Anglo-French government. 
Its official name was Condominium, but with two police forces, two currencies and two legal systems, it was known locally as Pandemonium. Captain Cook christened it the New Hebrides in 1774 because its ruggedness reminded him of the Scottish islands. My first destination was an island called Ambrim. It felt like the land that time forgot. Missionaries arrived here in 1839 and the first two immediately got eaten. They still don't like strangers wandering around on their own, so it seemed wise to take a tour with one of the island's chiefs, Chief Enos. So, what's all this talk about um, cannibalism on the island then? Why do you eat people? If you are a champion, champion, a strong man, yeah, then we want to eat you because uh, we will be stronger right. as you. Yeah, yeah, and we will use, use all your bones for making ara to kill people, uh, really? kill other people. But if you eat me, you might end up stupid like me. Right? It might yes. work the other way, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes, that's uh, true. What does it taste like? Oh, very sweet, better than uh, all other meat. Have you, have you tasted some? No, no, that, that's what they say. No, I think you yeah. have, haven't you? No, no, no. no. Have you not at all? No? Yeah, when, no. When did it die out then? When did cannibalism finish? Uh, cannibal fini uh, cannibalism is finished about 1939. 1939? Yeah. Did they used to eat missionaries and things like that? No, they never eat missionaries, but mm -hmm. they eat some white men. Once they, oh, a lot of people sitting around that, uh, um, oven when yeah. they cook it, cook yeah. him inside, and one of them start to eat the palm of his hand. Yeah. And when he start, to, you, you can watch me. Yeah. He start to eat the palm here, mm. and when he, he start to eat this one and get a string from here, mm. uh, then the palm scratch. He's, he said, <laughs> so everyone fly, fly off from this uh, uh, man who yeah. they cook it, yeah. and they all run away. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody there. <laughs> and nobody come back to that uh, thing again. Yeah. They all gone. Kind of waste of food, isn't it? Yeah, they waste the food, waste yeah. the meat, everything. Dog come and uh, smash everything. The islanders here are very secretive about why they perform the rom dance. No one is allowed to watch the costume making. If you do see it, you are fined one pig, then beaten with stinger nettles, and finally a house and garden are smashed. Sasivi village nearby is a great spot to drink kava with the locals and watch the sun go down. Like Fiji, kava drinking also seems to be the main hobby, but here it's strictly men only. Line them up. Kava. Mm. <laughs> 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 Oh, I can't feel my tongue. Mm. Tongue's gone numb now. Mm. <laughs> That's your third one, isn't it? Yeah, you the power. <laughs> the Catholic Church built and paid for the Carver Hut because they think it makes you less aggressive than alcohol. Close to Sasivi is Miley Bungalows, one of the few places to stay on the south coast of Ambrim. When you come to villages like this, bring some extra clothes. They're good to give away as presents because clothes are really expensive here. Plus, you can get rid of all those embarrassing Black Sabbath t-shirts all in one go.
Sasivi is famous for its hot springs, which bubble into the sea through volcanic rock, the ideal place for a quiet swim, or so I thought. Time to move on to the island of Tanna. The Tannese believed that it was once the only land in the world and that beyond it was nothing, not even sea. I was on my way to meet Chief Tom, the High Judge of Tanner Custom Law. He had something very special to show me. So, where are we off to now? We're going to a village to see a pig. It's a special pig, which is called, we call it Kabuya pig. It's the chief's pig in the village. If a chief wants to visit another chief yeah. in another village to talk about special ceremonies and custom dances or festivals, yeah. then he has to go with a special pig, Kabuya pig. What's the, what's the paint on the face? What's that about? Does that, that mean that, anything? No, that means a chief. Right. So uh, if, you, if you take that picture and give it to, to the other chief, you have to paint the face. And a special belt of a chief has to be put around this pig. And this, is, uh, this belt is called Tudaban in our language. And that's only the highest chief of this island can have that belt. I am a chief. So all everything that I put on myself going to an, meet another chief, that that chief is to be put on that pig too. According to our custom right. in Tana, only men become a chief. Right. And women, they look after the houses, the homes, and oh do the cooking. When the women are working, what do the men do then? Uh, they help, they will help working in the garden too sometimes, but, but there are times when men have to sit at the meeting place, Nakamala, and do the talking, you know, and discuss matters while women work in the garden. So the men just sit around talking while the women work their butts off. That's right. Oh dear. <laughs> you wow. should copy our custom too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> There'll be a revolution here, I'll tell you. <laughs> women won't like that for long. Oh, is that right? Yeah. There are very few markets on Tanner, but if you do find one, try out the national dish, Lap Lap. It's made by grating taro root and coconut mixing them with water to make a doughy paste. Sometimes fish or meat are added, and then the whole thing is tied up in leaves and cooked under hot stones. Is, it, is this the lap lap? Yes. Yeah. Has it got anything in it? Has it got fish or meat? Coconut cream. Coconut cream? Yes. Go on then, I'll have, I'll have one. Uh, is this what everybody eats here? Yeah. There are things. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, that is truly gross. Mm. Almost as interesting as a rich tea biscuit. Ooh. I'm going to have to finish this at home. Thanks a lot. Bye. Accommodation is scarce on Tanner, but Port Resolution on the east side of the island has some of the best huts to stay in. This room costs 2,700 vatu. That's about $25. You get three meals a day, plus a hot shower. <laughs> oh, 
Tanna is dominated by the massive Yasa volcano. It is still active, and no matter where you are on the island, your clothes and skin get covered in black dust. In the shadow of the volcano is Sulphur Bay, home to the John Frum cargo cult. The John Frum cult started in 1940 when a group of carver drinkers saw a spirit emerge from the sea who promised them great wealth if they denounced the Christian ways of the missionaries. A year later, American troops arrived with endless supplies of weapons, Coca-Cola and cigarettes, confirming the spirit's prophecy. Now they're waiting for John Frum's second coming. I was shown round the village by Willie, whose grandfather saw the vision of John Frum. He sang me one of the village's hymns. And in 41 came an Kasa Kira, Fea Queen Boyan. Kinir di na kwara niri di, Kamri memorial ya na kapir karu. Kurira Kasa Kira ya krinir, Messi in Ganda ni na ituke. Some locals believe that Yasa Volcano is where the newly dead go. It's easy to understand why. Best time to watch the volcano is at dusk, and you can get right to the edge, but there's no fence, so beware. Wow. the burger in it, that one. Yasa is the most accessible, active volcano in the world. It has three large vents which bubble away at a temperature of 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, constantly showering the crater with red-hot pumice and lava. Time to move on to the Solomon Islands. I was flying to the capital city, Honiara, on the main island of Guadalcanal. The Solomon Islands was the scene of intense fighting between the Americans and the Japanese during World War II. It still bears the scars of those battles with unexploded minefields, rusting guns and tanks. Henry told me that Guadalcanal is the most malaria-infested island in the world. I haven't had malaria for uh, about three years now. You haven't had malaria for three, three years, years now? Yeah. Is that good, is it? Oh, that's good, because yeah. most people have malaria once a month. Once a month? Yeah. What, people that live here? Yeah. There are 107 dialects in the Solomons, so most people speak pidgin which was introduced by the sandalwood traders in the early 19th century. It's a combination of Melanesian grammar and mainly English words, and it's easy to pick up. Well, Henry, 
What happened to the Solomon sun? Oh, uh, we have sun, rain. But it's just <laughs> yeah, rain. You rain. Do. Yeah. What's what's the pigeon for stop bloody raining? Stop bloody raining. Is that it? <laughs> That's no it. different. <laughs> no we'll have to try that, I think. Yeah. The rain stopped and I was on my way to Tanaru Falls. It's an hour and a half's hike through the rainforest. Don't believe anyone that tells you it's less. Tanaru Falls is 200 feet high, with a deep swimming hole at the bottom. There's a fee to pay if you visit, but the long hike means that you probably have the place to yourself. going the right way. Yeah. Skull Island is where locals used to bring their victims from headhunting sprees. Gosh. The bodies were left in shallow waters nearby until they'd rotted enough for the heads to be pulled off. When the flesh was completely eaten by parasites and the skull burned by the sun, they'd be laid out here. Can we have a look in? Yeah, we can. A bit busy, these headhunters, weren't they? There's a pipe there. Perhaps is that a missionary skull, maybe? Oh, I think. Yeah? Oh, that's good. <laughs> Brilliant. This place has um, spooked me out a bit. I think we'd better go. Huh? The Solomons is made up of seven provinces, and the easiest way to travel between them is by small plane and boat. The western province is the largest in the Solomons, and the islands are often said to be the most beautiful in the Pacific. This is Lola Island. And if you want to stay here, you just have to turn up on a boat and hope that it's not fully booked. But keep your boat driver, just in case it is. Well, I'm in luck. I missed the boat to Gizo, but Joe here has kindly offered to take me there. Well, when I say I missed the boat, that's not exactly true. It just left two hours earlier. So when you're cruising around the islands, remember to switch on to Solomon time. Hit it, Joe. <laughs> Gizo is the main island in the western province. 
During World War II, the Japanese suffered massive defeats here at the hands of the Americans, trying to shut off their supply lines. Nowadays, the only supply problem is the water shortage, which means that you can only get running water for a few hours a day. I'm going for my first ever wreck dive now. And so rumour has it, Gizo is the best place for it. Anyway, <coughs> let's hope so. So, Danny, what wreck are we going to see then? Um, we're going to be diving on the, uh, the wreck of the Tomaru. It's a Japanese transport, um, just uh, under 7,000 tons and uh, about 450 feet in length. So did the Japanese occupy Gizo? Yeah, there's an, an estimation of about 5,000 troops, only for a period of about six months here based in Gizo. Yeah. And then the Americans came and forced them out from there as they started shutting off their supply lines on the way to Guadalcanal. The Tomaru is only about 100 yards from the shore. Her captain just failed to beach her after she was torpedoed near her bow. When you swim round her, you can still see evidence of life on board ship. My final island was Malaita, where the islanders were once famous for being hostile. In the 19th century, Europeans kidnapped thousands of Malaitans to work on the sugarcane plantations in Australia. So Malaitans cooked and ate shipwrecked sailors as revenge. Nowadays, their taste seems to have changed a bit. Beetle nut and dumpling seem to be top of the shopping list at Alki Market. It looks like spam, that stuff there. Rubber spam. One, one dollar? Oh, I think I'll pass on that one. Yeah, I'm going to have to buy some fish and chips. Remind me at home. Come on, so they two dollar? Yeah. God, that's a big chip, isn't it? Mm. It's jam, it's not even potato. It's good. Mm. Morning. Morning. Is this the uh, Buster Beaner? Beaner? Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Oh. Oh. Hi there. Ah. Travel on the island is by passenger truck. You can find them in Alki on the days when ships arrive, but on other days, you might find yourself stuck without any transport.
Malaita is surrounded by artificial islands. These are tiny villages like Busu, built in the sea out of boulders and coral by families fleeing tribal warfare on the mainland. The houses may look flimsy, but in fact they're very sturdy, built to withstand cyclones and flooding. Busu Island, the main industry is making shell money, which is the traditional currency of Malaita. It's still used for compensation and the purchase of land, pigs, canoes and brides. The money is made by grinding and shaping shells into small discs, which are then strung together in six foot lengths. All this effort means that they don't come cheap. I'm going to have to buy one of these necklaces, I think. How much do you say these were? Ten dollars each one. So that twenty dollars there? That's, that's a bargain now, I've seen how they're made. Thank you. Thanks a lot there. Thanks to you. While the women make the money, the men get down to the important business of chewing beetle nut. What's that? What's that? Beetle nut. Beetle nut. Is this what you all chew? Is this your... Oh, it is. Take off the skin. Oh. That was disgusting. Chew this. Chew this. Okay. Mm, please. Please. Whoa, thanks. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the lime? The lime. Lime? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the lime works wonders on your teeth if you want to separate them from your gums. That's enough. Yeah? That's enough for lime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, we, we drink like alcohol. What, one no? Yeah. Oh, let's have another. Yeah. <laughs> it may well make you feel drunk, but it also tastes foul. No wonder they spit it out. Mmm, <laughs> that was nice. Mm. <laughs> now this trip has certainly been worth the long haul to get out here. And I even feel that I've tasted a slice of paradise. But the trouble is, that it's just been so good that I'm going to stay here. So, well, I suppose this is goodbye. Yeah. Bye.
International Video Network introduces Lonely Planet, not just a new home video series, a new home video adventure. Based on the world-renowned Lonely Planet guidebooks, each program captures the unplanned exploits of independent travelers. The only thing to expect is the unexpected. Lonely Planet videos, guides, and phrasebooks are available now for Morocco, Brazil, Vietnam, Alaska, Indonesia and La Ruta Maya, Japan, Australia, the Pacific Islands, East Africa, Turkey, the Indian Himalayas, Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands, and more. Lonely Planet, bringing you personal adventures in video entertainment and Lonely Planet guide and phrase books. For the name of a Lonely Planet video dealer or bookseller nearest you, or for a complete catalog, call 1-800-669-4486, extension 805.